Today's class for heat and temperature, this is topic six, transferring energy. Um, so an energy source, this is an object or a material that can transfer its energy to other objects. So for example, if you hold your hands um, in front of like a light bulb or hot fire, your hands will start to warm up. Um, so there's three ways we're gonna talk about in which energy can be transferred. So radiation, conduction, and convention convection. So we'll start by talking about radiation. So this is the transfer of energy. It's in the form of electromagnetic waves, right? There's no, there's no any movement of matter. Um, for example, sunlight uh, to a solar cell or to a solar powered calculator or to a solar powered toy or radio. That's happening by radiation. So when we talk about radiant energy, this is any energy that is transmitted by electromagnetic waves. Um, it can still be absorbed and reflected by objects, and it moves through empty space at 300,000 kilometers per second. Um, so electromagnetic radiation, this is the EMR. This is energy that's transferred as electromagnetic waves. So it includes um, the radio waves. It'll include x-rays, microwaves, um, like UV rays as well. Um, and we'll talk about more of that in the next lesson. So radiation transfers energy. Um, radiant energy, it travels it, and behaves like a wave. It can travel through empty space, air, glass, and many other materials. Um, and like I said before, there's many different forms of EMR, like radio waves, microwaves, visible light, x-rays. Um, the sun, um, some of its thermal energy does get transferred as a type of EMR. That's called the infrared radiation, um, which is abbreviated as IR. It's also called heat radiation. So there's three characteristics here of radiant energy. So all forms of radiant energy, they share these characteristics. One is that they behave like waves. Two they can be absorbed and reflected by objects. And three, they travel across empty space at 300,000 kilometers per second. Um, just a little bit of review here. We did talk about some of these points here already, but dark colored surfaces, they absorb and radiate energy better than light colored ones. Dull surfaces absorb and radiate energy better than shiny ones. Therefore, shiny surfaces, they are able to reflect radiant energy better than dull ones. And then light colored surfaces, they're able to reflect radiant energy better than dark colored ones. Uh, just a quick video here on radiation. So I'll just pause it here. Okay, so that was a little bit more on radiation. Uh, next, we're going to talk about conduction. So conducting energy through solids. So when we look at solids, we already know that the particles are very close together. So therefore, thermal energy can be transferred from one particle to the next. So when we talk about thermal conduction, this is the process of transferring thermal energy through direct collisions between the particles, right? So they're bouncing um, against each other. So conduction is the transfer of heat energy between substances that are in contact with each other. All right, so conduction here, we're looking at this example here. Um, so we've got this metal spoon, it's inside of a mug of hot chocolate. So the particles in the hot chocolate, they are moving very rapidly. And um, they're moving ra very rapidly, so they're bombarding the particles in the parts of the spoon as well that are in, that's, um, in the hot liquid. So now the spoon's particles, um, that are being pushed around, they start to move faster, vibrating back and forth. And then the faster they move, the greater the thermal energy in that part of the spoon. And then the spoon begins to warm up. All right, and we can see the arrows pointing up uh, to the handle of the spoon. Um, so heat is being transferred from the hot liquid to the spoon uh, by conduction. Um, the particles in the spoon, they speed up, and then the spoon becomes hot. All right, and um, again, here now we're looking at a diagram showing um, conduction here and particles. 
Um, so conduction, transferring energy, um, we have here uh, the fire, so that's the heat source. And then we've got the particles that are near the heat source. They're going to absorb the energy from it, and they're going to start to begin moving um, fast or more rapidly. Then those fast-moving particles are going to bump into the neighboring particles, and they're going to increase their energy and motion. And then um, that's going to happen to the to the next row here of particles. So it just continues that way. So that's that's the way conduction works. Um, thermal energy is going to get transferred throughout the material. So um, metals are excellent heat conductors, so metals like gold and copper, and then substances like glass and wood, they are less efficient at transferring thermal energy by conduction, so they are called insulators. Um, so conductors, like I said, metals are very good conductors. Um, a key characteristic of conduction is that heat will transfer in only one direction, so from the area of greater kinetic energy to the area of less kinetic energy. So that's what we saw in that diagram. Um, heat transfers from areas having more thermal energy to areas having less thermal energy. Um, another example here, if you place a hot water bottle next to your cold skin, the hot water bottle contains more thermal energy than your skin does, so heat's going to transfer from the hot water bottle to the skin. Um, the, although the temperature of the skin rises as conduction takes place, none of the matter from the hot water bottle moves to the skin. Okay, um, The skin becomes warm because of energy transfer between the particles. So this uh, process of conduction is most common in solids, uh, less common in liquids, and, and very rare in gases. And like I said before, conductors, these are materials that allow easy transfer of heat, like metals. Metals are very um, good examples of conductors of energy. Um, insulators, on the other hand, these are materials that don't allow easy transfer of heat. So like before I had said wood and glass. Um, so they're reducing the amount of heat that can transfer from a hotter object to a colder one. Um, other examples are like plastic and cork. Those are also good insulators. So that means that they are poor conductors of heat. Um, so here, just uh, looking a little bit more at conductors and insulators. So here we have some household products that use heat. And what you'll see here is that they usually combine insulators with conductors to create safe tools. Um, so looking here at an iron, um, this bottom portion would be metal, but the portion that you're going to hold on to would be plastic so that you're not burning yourself. Um, here we've got like the metal pot and lid, right? The metal part is, is a good conductor. And then we have like the plastic um, parts here that you're going to hold on to um, against so that you don't burn. Same thing with like a curling iron. You've got the metal part and then the plastic part. All right, so next we are talking about convection. This is a process by which a warm fluid, so keep in mind a fluid can be a liquid or gas, and um, it moves from place to place carrying thermal energy. So um, a fluid is a material that can be poured or that can flow from place to place, all right? So again, a fluid is a liquid or a gas. Um, a convection current, this is a flow resulting from the rising of warm materials and the sinking of cooler, denser materials. And we'll take a look at that in, in the diagram here. So here um, we're looking at, uh, we have a heat source here, we have a candle. All right, so the warmed materials, they become less dense and they're going to rise, all right, because materials expand as they warm up and particles move farther apart. So that's what's happening in A. Okay, warmed air expands. Uh, B is showing that less dense, warmer air rises. Okay, so next what's going to happen is colder, denser fluid, it's going to sink down and it's going to push the nearby warmer fluid upward. Okay, um, then this cold fluid will also warm up and push upward. So as warm fluid rises and moves away from the heat source, it cools, it's going to contract as its particles move closer together. Then um, it becomes denser, 
as it cools, it's going to sink back down towards the heat source. Then it's going to get warmed and forced become forced, forced upward again. And that forms this convection current. Okay, and this process will continue to repeat. All right, so um, the rising air here shown in C, it's cooling, it's going to contract, it's going to start to fall down uh, because the cool, denser air sinks down. And then um, that cool air will again move in to replace the rising warm air, and then it forms this um, convection current. Uh, shown here when we're boiling water. So the first process that's happening here um, is we have that hot element on the stove. The heat from the hot element, it's going to reach the water particles at the bottom of the pot by conduction. All right, that's the process here, um, conduction, um, because the two materials are in contact with each other. Then the heated water is going to expand. It's going to become less dense. The hot particles are going to rise. They're going to push the cooler particles at the top to the sides. Next, um, the cooler particles are going to sink from the top and they're going to take the place of the rising particles. And then um, we're going to reach the bottom and then those are going to get heated and this will continue to repeat. Okay, and it forms this convection current.